Hello, everyone. Let me introduce you to Anna. She is the kindest, most loving person I have ever met. She is 72, she lives in Paris, and she has five beautiful grandchildren. Here is her family. She's not doing too bad for someone in her 70s. She had a few heart problems, but nothing too serious. And she actually wants to live long enough to marry her grandchildren. Unfortunately, her dream will never come true. Anna died a couple of months ago. On July 20th, 2017, a couple of months ago, Anna was gardening when she started feeling unwell. Her children took her to the hospital. The news were not good. Anna was suffering from severe heart failure and she needed to go into surgery straight away. The surgeons put a pacemaker and the surgery lasted for hours. But after the surgery, Anna recovered spectacularly well. The whole medical team was very happy. They actually told her she could go back home in just a couple of weeks. But a few days after, Anna developed a urinary disease. For those of you that know hospitals, you know that this is something that's very common. A lot of people get these infections. So the doctor prescribed penicillin, which is a standard antibiotic given for these infections. But one thing they didn't know was that Anna was severely allergic to penicillin. She died of an anaphylactic shock. If I'm telling you this story today, it's not because I want you all to feel sad. And it's not just another story. I'm telling you this story today because in Anna's medical records was a clear note stating that she was severely allergic to penicillin. But no one saw it or no one really cared. And anyway, nothing was done to prevent this from happening. But since we're here to have fun and not to tell sad stories, Let's go back in time a little bit. Let's go back to that day of July when Anna started feeling unwell, and let's rewrite her story. So, on the 20th of July, 2017, after spending the whole day gardening, Anna started feeling unwell. Her children called an ambulance, and this is when the story changes. When the paramedics arrived, they scanned Anna's bracelet containing her public medical ID. With that information, they were able to retrieve her medical records in a few seconds. Let's pause here for a second. Before that incident, Anna signed up to the public medical ID program. This is a program that allows everyone to share medical information, medical data. And these people can actually choose who to share it with. So since Anna's a bit old and she knew that she might have some health issues afterwards, she said, well, let's share my medical information with emergency teams and med medical teams. So that's how the emergency team that arrived to Anna's house were able to retrieve all her medical information. And when Anna arrived to the hospital, all the doctors were able to see the information and all the nurses. No one prescribed Anna penicillin after her surgery. Because a red light was showing that Anna was allergic to penicillin and everyone was aware of it. Anna was given an another antibiotic and she went back home. She was safe. Here she is at her grandson's wedding. All this is possible thanks to blockchain. Now, usually I get the question, what is blockchain? How does it work? How many of you here can tell me precisely what the internet is and how it works? Okay, that's not a lot of people. But you all use the internet. You all use emails, you all use websites. You don't need to understand what blockchain is and how it works to understand how you can use it. You can use it for medical records, like Anna's. You can also use it 
to make sure that the drugs that are delivered in developing countries are not fake and that people don't die because they receive counterfeit drugs. You can also use it to make sure that pharmaceutical labs don't put on the market drugs that are, don't have verified clinical trials. And all this can serve the patient. It can serve Anna. So what does blockchain do? It empowers patients, it brings trust, and improves interoperability. If now you're not convinced that blockchain is helpful in healthcare, I don't know what to do. But one thing is sure. Blockchain is not an option in healthcare anymore. It's becoming a need. Thank you.